Well, and that's know? what I talk about. This the sport is built on a house of cards. So the whole okay. So if you talk to Feld, they say our job is to put together a race, put it on, and give these guys an opportunity to show themselves and go make money. We don't pay them the gigantic money. We give them the opportunity and the platform. That's what we do. That's on them to go get money. I said, no, nah, you got it all wrong. I said, what they need to do is take some of that ticket money, that TV money. And I'm not saying you give them a set amount. You give them a percentage. So you're always commissioned salesperson always does better. You give them a percentage to the teams or the riders to give them a base. It doesn't have to be gigantic. Like I said, in every other sport, the players get between 40 and 60%, depending on what their union negotiated or what their players association negotiated. Sure. The way I figured it out with the numbers that I've seen, and you know, I've got the contracts or tracks and mixed sports and all that six to 8% of the revenue is returned to the racers. And that's a, that's a generous number. It's very generous. That's embarrassing. Could you imagine if football played 6% of their money back to the players? Players yeah. be making like 25, 30 grand a year to play football. Nobody would do mm -hmm. that. And that's essentially what we're asking these guys to do. So if we could change that model, we'd have a base. Now these teams, if they do lose a rock star, they know there's still some revenue coming in. So that's a stop gap until they get their next big sponsor. And yes, they should, they're going to need big sponsors. They're going to need contingency money. They're going to need that to make these guys millionaires and billionaires or whatever they're doing, but they need a stop gap to keep these teams alive. And that's where I'm just like, come on, man, share a little bit, 40%, 30%, give it to the riders. So everyone that makes the night show has enough money to get to the next race. 100%. And before people think that you and I are on the redistribution of wealth platform, we are not. 100% you and I are not. When it comes to the economics of it, I look at it this way. Look at the model of the PGA. You know, when you've got a PGA pro purse, and I'm not saying the big ones like Augusta, but just, well, use Augusta, Okay. If you recognize that you make the cut, I don't know what the cut is, 25, 35, 45. I'm not a golfer, okay, so I don't want to act like I am. But what I do know is I went to high school with Chris DeMarco. And talking with him, you know that if you make the cut, you're guaranteed, and again, I don't know the exact number, what are you guaranteed, 100 grand? Well, how in the hell can the PGA, that one particular event, be able to hand out, let's, again, not trying to insult anyone's mathematics here, the winner half million to a million dollars, second place, 600 to 750. Add up that purse. That's what, an eight, $9 million purse? How in the hell can they offer 9 million for one event? You make the cut at one event, 100, 100 grand guaranteed or 50 grand. I don't care what the hell the number is. My question is the model. Now, before somebody makes a comment and says, oh, well, you're an idiot. More people play golf than they do, ride moto. I understand that it's all the scaling of the numbers is all we're talking about. I'm not saying. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm not saying. Make it a hundred grand. I'm saying make it a percentage a of percentage ticket sales. And, but know, people tell us our sport is, series. but they're telling us that you can't do it in our sport. And I disagree. If okay. you can look at what they've done in PGA, as you said, the NFL major league baseball, those organizations realize that the only way that they can go out and get, a corporate sponsor for the major league baseball is to respect the people that are out on the field playing, because if there's no show, there's no way to sell the system. That's why this model is upside down and backwards, as you call it on a built on a house of cards. If we would respect that those people on those motorcycles are the show and you do a better job of making them personable and you allow there to be, again, we keep going back to Netflix and the formula one, there'd be a way that we could pay these guys what they're legitimately worth. And here's the crazy part. The teams could actually make money instead of losing money. And the promoters could actually make more money. See, that's the problem. Everyone's like, oh, well, we don't want the promoters to make as much money. Bullshit. We're not saying that. No, no, we want I'd them like, to make more. We, just we, want want them to, we want them to make more, but you've got to build a model that that more, I, I said double M, the more model is if they're making more money, so are the guys that are the show, which is the example of PGA, Major League Baseball, football. I mean, you, what's it? Who's the guy? Jerry Jones owns the Cowboys, right? Why are we not consulting with somebody like him? No, I shouldn't say that. We had a Grundle. He had the exact same model and got shit on. So we'll move on. 
Yeah. Well, it, let me just, if people wonder why I say house of cards, we just break this down. Yeah. This thing is a budget. Like, okay, so Team Honda, where does that budget come from? It comes from bike sales, which is a direct relation to promotional accounts. So when their promotional budget goes, that's the racing budget. And if there's no base salary at Supercross to keep these teams afloat, if Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki get some marketing guy that says, you know what, all this money we spent on racing would be way better suited in a social media campaign, done. You don't have a series. Yep. All this does is solidifies that. So if that happens, the teams would still be there. Yes, they're going to have to go find another sponsor. And yes, they're going to struggle. But you're going to have a JGR who can survive until they get that next sponsor. They're not dependent on that sponsor. So, and then that's enough of that. We're beating a dead horse on that one. But I'm with hey, you, brother. Outdoors. Uh, I think it's finally time for AC to get his big bike title. And I, I, I know it hasn't been that long. It's the second season. And he almost got it last year, but it feels like forever with AC because he just has been on the cusp and so close and winning and crashing. And I think he's ready. What about you coach? What's your outdoor pick? Who you got winning this thing? I know you outdoor have pick it, right? for four, Yeah. Outdoor pick for four fifty. Um, and this sounds like such a bad answer. Does he stay off the ground? He wins. If he doesn't stay off the ground, he's going to get it to a veteran who is going to manage a series. Now, does that mean Webb and Osborne get in there just because they know how to manage a series? Then I have to contradict myself. AC knows how to manage a series. He just needs to manage his mistakes. But I do believe he's the guy to beat this summer. See, and I disagree with you on who's going to step in there. I think even if he goes down, I think Chase Sexton's going to be the guy. Totally, totally agree. But the only thing that's hurt Sexton is his own bad mistakes as, as well. Both of those. I mean, I hate to say it because it's the cliche rookie comment, but yeah, those two guys eliminate the mistakes. There's no doubt Sexton's the guy. And if you watch Sexton in that last race, go through those whoops, who did that look like on that bike? His mentor. What's that? I, it, it looked just like his mentor. It looked He's like James Stewart blitz in the whoops. Oh, Stewart? Yeah. Oh my oh. God. Sexton was the fastest Stewart. guy. Stewart was fast, but he wasn't as, his technique wasn't as tight. No, but I mean, you can see him. You can see him kind of spilling over into Sexton's attack on the track because I always try to get my athletes to realize attack where everyone else is trepidatious, and that's always been Chad Reed's, and that's always been James's mo. The war, the gnarlier the whoops, the faster those guys were going to go. Yeah. And we saw that with Sexton, and you know, I guess the big question is: is can he carry it outside um, for the full round? This will be the year for both AC and Sexton to really. I think they're both hungry. I think they both want to be the next heir apparent, both, especially with the new Tomac change, you know, AC definitely wants to be the heir apparent, the King Penn at green Sexton wants to knock off rocks and whether people won't like that comment or not, that's reality. So I think those two are very, very hungry. And I think they both have a mentor in their back pocket. That's going to help them. You've got Nick way helping AC see things differently. You got James helping Sexton see things a little bit differently. Hey, you got to win the war, not every battle. Now you look at the Villapoto approaches, you know, it's about being it. I know it's an RC comment, but, you know, you win your championships by managing your bad days, you know, and I think these two guys are definitely the ones to do it. I think they've shown that they figured out the grind of the season. And I think it's, I think it's theirs to lose should they not get injured by their own mistakes. Totally agree. And I think Tomac will be there. He's going to do kind of what he just did in the Supercross series where he's, he's Tomac. He can go, not all the way, and he's going to be in a podium position, ready to pounce if anyone makes a mistake. He'll take a win on certain days, but is he going to go all out and, and hang it out to that next level on the days when AC and Sexton are just having one of those moments? Now he's going to let them go. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting because on, on one hand, I, the guy I'm leaning on that's going to come into the kind of the mix is not going to be so much Tomac because I think we're going to see an ugly scenario like we always do. Because he knows he's switching teams. Can you imagine the, the tension that you could cut under that tent? I'm not saying they're going to sabotage his bike or whatever, but that's just a shitty environment to be in. The it's mix, happened. You know, Mike Kudrowski, there's, there's a history. Yeah, of thing, I hope. you know it's coming. So I'm not, I don't think Tomac will be as much of a shaker only because of the team dynamics. The person I think is going to be Osborne because he's fresh. He sat out the majority of Supercross. Now is his back 100%? If it is... And of the freshest of the three big guys, you know, because if you look at last year's big contenders, Osborne's going to be the freshest coming in, and he is the defending champion. And I think he'll be the guy that's going to want to make a statement amongst the three consistently. 
he worries me a little bit. Like 30, he's going to be 32 in September. 32 is not old. It really isn't. No. But when you're coming off a bulging disc and a lot of the abuse that he's probably given his body throughout the years, I don't know. I mean, that could be really bad. Like if he doesn't come back and do really well in the series, that might be the beginning of the end for Osborne. Or he could be out. Maybe, maybe he, and we know guys have done this in the past, maybe he exaggerated that back to get the time off, to get ready for outdoors and he's going to come out on fire. I have to think it's the, the prior. I don't think he's going to be on fire. I just don't. Last year was amazing. What he did, I don't want to take away from it because winning in a pandemic was probably harder than a regular year, but yep. it's different. This year you have all the contenders back. You have a regular mindset. I don't know that he's going to be the guy in a regular situation. Well, like you say, it's it goes back to what we even spent 15 minutes talking about earlier. We, we don't get any definitive actual pictures of the truth. So we'll just let the first three rounds, you know, if Osborne comes out and shakes it up, then we know that he's healthy. And then if he starts to fade, we'll know his back's giving him issues. And, you know, you bring up a really good point. AC has sat out the majority of Supercross. He's fresh. Sexton, he went all the way to the end, maybe not so fresh. You look at that dynamic of Anderson shaking it up, Tomac throwing in the mix, Osborne in the mix. Obviously, we're talking AC and, and Sexton. We haven't even started to think about Anderson getting gnarly and throwing some things in there. And Christian Craig's going to be on a 450 outdoors. And he's, you know, I don't know how healthy he'll be, but he's definitely going to be mentally fresh. And there's a lot of contracts on the line this year. 